So just another point. This that we're studying at the moment. You can find the relevant chapter in the book, right? We just studied culture, then we have we have political and economic and then legal. So we're following the book on these areas, right? This is the most respected book in the area. So you can read the book because we're going to on to study the international legal environment chapter seven. Okay? The book gives extra information and examples about those things. Okay? And marketing is a soft subject, not something like statistics is a hard subject. Right? It means you have to try to understand. Okay? Maybe you can't understand even though you read. But marketing is a soft subject. It means that you know, if you read the book, you should get an A in the, in the class, right? You should get a good score. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. So I think in this subject it's useful to read the book. Either you can buy the book from the link, right? That we've already studied the chapters, or you, this is in my office, and also there's one in the library. It's a, little, it's a different color, the one in the library is blue and white. Okay? So, uh, it can also help you when you're doing your project. So, <coughs> we also had these questions the last time. Did anybody find the answer to this question? <coughs> yes? The highest uh, enrollment in tertiary education is uh, between the ages of 25 and 34 is in Korea. Mm. South Korea, right? <coughs> what about the GDP per capita of Malaysia? 7,000, 7, right? Depends which source you use. What source did you use? Uh, trading economics. Trading economics? For, uh, yeah. And for this one, Nation Master? Data.OECD. This was OECD you used? Data? Okay. So then, we can use various different resources to find uh, about the economic environment and the political environment. Just remember, I had a question from a student. They looked at the mark, the document, the country notebook, with all of the things, right? They asked me, do I need to find all of the things? Okay. And I said, no, just what's relevant for your product, okay? There may also be something that's not there that's relevant for your product, okay? So we gave the example before. You know, maybe your product, maybe this is relevant. A high enrollment in tertiary education. <coughs> maybe you're selling some product on the internet, right? So that's one of the reasons why internet is companies and products are so successful in Korea. Because Korea has a high enrollment in tertiary education. Okay? So all the people are able to use the internet well. Okay? So other countries may, it might not be the case. So, even if it doesn't say this on the country notebook, if this is relevant for our product, relevant economic information, then we need to find out that information. Okay? So just think about, don't give, when we did this in previous semesters, some students came here and they gave a presentation on the country's economy, like it has this, this, and this, and this. But I said to them, but how is that related to your product? Why did you have all this information? just random information about the economy. How is, that's not the task, right? To give me just random information about a country's economy. The task is to find the relevant economic information which is relevant for your product and your situation, okay? Do you understand? Yes or no? Yes. Hmm? Tell me a product, any product. Someone give me an example, just tell me any product. Mm, Coca-Cola. So what kind of economic information will you be looking for with Coca-Cola? Can anybody tell me? What kind of economic information is relevant to selling Coca-Cola? There's some economic information which is relevant for everything. Amount of Fast food, the amount of fast food in maybe. the regions. Yeah, okay, maybe people who eat fast food, they also drink Coca-Cola, right? So, 
uh, fast food restaurants, how many fast food restaurants there are. Anything else? Uh, are there any other substitutes for the product? We're going to get into that later when we talk about competition, right? Anything else? Okay, if you're thinking about opening a factory there, what's the unemployment rate, right? Could be strong. In Coca-Cola, they could have a bottling factory in the country, could have the economy. Maybe if you're thinking about opening the factory, the labor cost, what's the labor cost like? Okay. We could also look at the health, right? Do you think healthier people are more or less likely or less likely to buy Coca-Cola? Less likely. So we can look up some health statistics, right? Like even we could look up obesity. You understand obesity? Maybe they're more likely to drink cola, right? Or the sports or other on the Nation Master we have a lot of information about health, right? Uh, so we try to find some specific information for our product. And what's currently could be a risk for Coca-Cola? What do you think could be a risk for Coca-Cola? kind of risk could Coca-Cola have? Just that kind of specific product, soft drinks. <coughs> Did you see that Britain just put a tax on the soft drinks? They called sugar tax. It was in the news. Actually, Korean soft drinks have a lot more sugar than British or Irish soft drinks already. So I think Korea should bring in that tax. <laughs> And it's, much che it's cheaper as well for the soft drinks here. So Britain brought in a tax. If you have more than something like 10 grams and 100 grams, more than that is sugar, then you have to pay a high tax. So it means the price of the 2 litre bottle of Coca-Cola is nearly going up double the price, from £1 to £2. Okay? Because they want to discourage the young people from drinking cola. Is that a risk for Coca-Cola? Yes. If you're selling Coca-Cola in Britain? It's a big risk, right? So we try to find those kind of specific things. That's kind of a regulatory risk we talked about in the economy, right? The government puts on the tax or new regulation on the soft drink. So we try to find, you know, even if we are selling a soft drink in Denmark and they don't have the tax yet, you know, Britain just made the tax, maybe Denmark is going to make the tax <coughs> soon, right? Could be a type of risk. Bless you. So, then let's move on to the legal environment. So companies can face some legal and regulatory hurdles. Do you understand hurdle? Yes. So the class has started again. Hurdle is you have to jump over. Jump over the hurdle. So it's the same for the law. So there is kind of a problem for companies which is that every country has different laws. Would companies prefer if every country had the same law? Yes. Or do they want every country to have different laws? If you're a company, which do you prefer? The same law everywhere or different laws in every country? Same. Same. Of course you're going to prefer the same law, right? For example, in the European Union, we have banking industry, right? And what they expect to happen, what should happen usually, is these banks in this country A are better than these banks in this country B. They're doing a better job. So what should happen? There's competition, free competition in the EU, right? Countries A banks are doing great. Countries B banks are doing badly. So what's going to happen? Hmm? Bank A is going to acquire Bank B, okay? Take over. Yes, yeah, so acquire, and then take over the bank B, and then they will be in this country, right? But in Europe, because of the different laws, this country has a different law, and this has a different law, it's a little bit complicated for the financial institutions, okay? This company, this bank goes to this country, this is Germany, this is Ireland. They do all their things in German, different language. Now they also have different law in Ireland. So they have to change their products, like financial products, because the Irish law is different. So when they sell the credit cards, everything is different. They have to change all the interest rates and change the conditions. Okay? When they give the loan to people, 
different conditions, especially the home loan. In Ireland, for example, it's very hard for the bank to get the house back from the people, right? In Germany, much easier to get the house back if people don't pay back their loan. So, the law is different. The German bank doesn't find it easy to come to Ireland. So, in Europe, the banking, finance, banking industry is still very local. Even though we made the EU and the free trade, they still, because each country has their individual law, the banks are slow to adapt and move because they have to pay a lot of money to change all their systems and change everything to adapt to the other law. Okay? So it depends on your product, but if you're, set, if you're a bank where there's a lot of laws about mortgages and credit cards and all those things, okay, it may be more complicated than if you're selling rice. Okay? But we have to think about the local legal system. Okay, so international regulations exist, but only if countries agree to follow certain standards of conduct. And that's not easy. They are called treaties or conventions. We have international treaty or convention. So for example, on intellectual property, on whaling. The famous one is whaling. Don't kill whales. Okay? Illegal to kill whales. That kind of thing. Right? We had the Kyogro Treaty on pollution, but some countries didn't sign that like the US, right? So, always we have these treaties and conventions. There's always countries missing. A group of countries decides to sign the treaty. Some countries may not sign the treaty. And then, there's no real enforcement. If a country breaks, breaks the treaty, right? The enforcement measures aren't good. Punishment measures, right? How can you punish the country? Let's say, for example, Japan has started killing whales again, right? Australia took a case to the <coughs> International Court of Justice because uh, both Japan and Australia voluntarily agree that if another country has a problem with us, we will go to the International Court of Justice. But there are many countries which don't agree to go to the International Court of Justice. In Korea, if you do something wrong, can you say to me, I don't want to go to court. Right? Let's say we were in a car accident. It was your fault. Okay? Can you say, the judge sends you a letter to come to court? Can you say, I don't want to go to court. I'm not going to court. I'm okay. No, I'm not going today. Don't worry. <laughs> I think I'll just stay at home. What will happen if you do that? Police are going to come and get you and put you in jail, right? But what about international law? What about if a country says, oh, I'm not going to the International Court of Justice. I don't want to go there, right? What happens to the country? Does the police come and get the country and put them in jail? No, so the, this is voluntary. Countries agree to go, only when the two countries agree, can we go to the International Court of Justice, okay? So there's a problem in international law. It's not that well enforced or punished. Okay, in this case, Japan, some countries have signed up, about 60 countries have signed a pledge. Do you understand the pledge? It says, when another country, which has also signed the pledge, asks us to go to the ICJ, we will go to the ICJ. So Japan signed that, right? So Japan had to go then, because they made that pledge. And Australia said, let's go to the ICJ. And then Japan said, oh, why did I sign that pledge? I shouldn't have signed this. Now I have to go. Okay? Do you understand pledge? Yes. Pledge? Well, you lose your reputation. So the main problem for countries, to sum up in international law, is they lose their reputation if they don't keep the treaty or don't do the convention. But there's no real enforcement mechanism. So even though Australia and Japan went to the ICJ and Australia won, okay, the ICJ told Japan, don't kill whales, right? Japan said, we're killing whales for scientific purposes. Okay? And the ICJ said, we don't believe you. You're killing whales and eating them. Okay? So, uh, this year, Japan started killing whales again. A lot of whales. They killed 50 whales at the start of the year, right? What's going to happen to Japan? Does the ICJ have police or army sent to Japan and take Japan to jail? No. No? Right? So no 
not good enforcement. Just Japan is embarrassed or lose their reputation. Okay. For trade, we have the WTO. That's a little bit different. The WTO can put on the trade sanctions. Okay. They can put sanctions. If you are a member of the WTO, it means you agree. Right? Just voluntary. You voluntarily agree to this treaty. Gave up some of your sovereignty. So if you do something wrong, the WTO can decide that you have some trade sanction against you. Okay? And then at the highest level, we have NATO and the UN. Right? So the UN, you do something very bad. The UN Security Council. Do you understand the UN Security Council? Yes. So the UN Security Council... Post World War II, it has the winners of World War II, France, the UK, right, as the permanent members, maybe Russia, China, and then a lot of rotating members change the countries every year. But they have a veto system. Do you understand veto? Yes. Veto system means one country don't agree, they can't do it. Okay? So look, if we want to use the World Army. This is the closest thing we have to the World Army, right? The UN Security Council get together and make a decision. But that's only in the very extreme case, okay? Like uh, we had in the World War II or in uh, Yugoslavia, right? Where there was genocide. Do you understand genocide? Genocide killing pe a lot of people for no reason, okay? Then the Security Council may get involved. But they don't get involved in day to day problems here, okay? So, basically just if countries agree, we have these kind of international regulations. So, we're going to talk about the different legal systems. Uh, what's important for the jurisdiction? Jurisdiction means where. Where are we going to hear the case if we have a dispute? How to solve a dispute? Protecting the international property rights and commercial law. So the world has four main legal systems. Uh, we have common law, which comes from the UK. Basically, what happened in the UK was people used to write down what happened in the villages. Right? Do you understand village, small town? So people always wrote down the decisions they made. And then the king, one of the kings in about the 12th century, he decided to collect all of the things that the people wrote down. Okay? And then the king went around the country deciding on the cases. But the common law uses precedent. Precedent means what, hap what did we decide in the past? Okay? What we decided in the past, so they look at the previous cases. What happened before? Okay? It comes back from this kind of history. They follow the laws and the cases which were written down before and uh, decide based on that. This is common law is used in British Empire countries like Australia, Canada, okay? Ireland. The US use a mixture of common law and civil law, but common law is a big influence because the U UK uh, was the boss of the US before the US got independence, right? Then next one we have civil or code law. Civil law comes from the Romans. Do you know the Romans? The Romans? Roman Empire? Napoleon, do you know Napoleon? Napoleon? Mm -hmm. So the Romans and Napoleon, they like codes. Code is like a list, right? You write down the list, a long list of laws, and you follow the code. So that's the main difference, English law, Common law, precedent, we look at the case. What happened two years ago? What happened 10 years ago? Let's make a similar decision. What did the judge decide? Right? But <coughs> in civil law, we have a list. So follow the list. What does it say on the rules? Exactly. So a lot of new countries after the Second World War decided to adopt civil law. Why? Because it, it was the French Republic. Do you know the French Republic? Yes. Napoleon. They overthrew the king. We talked earlier about revolutions and making the, that kind of system. So France was one of the first republics. 
So other republics, like Republic of Korea, right? They often look at Napoleon's idea for law. Okay, he made this kind of civil law. So civil or code law is used in uh, Germany, France, mainland Europe. Okay. Islamic law used in the Middle East, very based on the religious text. Okay. And then uh, the Marxist socialist law in the Russia or China. So <coughs> every country has a different idea. They all have different ways of law. So common law makes decisions through the past decisions of higher courts. Okay, also called customary law. So customary law means what were people doing? Do you understand custom or habit? What do people usually do when this happens? Okay. Ownership is established by use. So in Ireland, if I use some land for 10 years or 15 years, for example, there was some football team, and they had been using some land for 12 years as of their football pitch, but they didn't own the land. But after they use it for 15 years, then they own it. Because they are uh, using it. Okay? In the UK, they have a problem now with the property market, too expensive. So they're doing, if you don't use your property, some Saudi Arabian investors just buy property and they don't live there, just they want the price to go up. Okay? So if you don't lose the property, then you have to sell it. Okay? So use is important in the common law. In the code law, we have different lists, commercial law, civil law, criminal law. And registration is important, more than, more than use. If I have the paper which says I'm the owner, that means I'm the owner. In common law, using is more important. Islamic law is based on the Quran, the religious text. Okay? Uh, for example, in the Islamic law, we can't charge interest. So the banks can't charge interest. Or if a company sells bonds, they can't get paid interest. Because the Quran doesn't agree with interest. So, instead, they make a system of gift, like gifts. Right? They try to find a way around that. <laughs> so, it has a very uh, specific pattern of behavior for property rights and economic freedoms. So we said this, this is, a, for example, the payment of interest is not allowed. Uh, the Islamic system places emphasis on social and religious dimensions. Do you know Iran? Yeah. Yes. Iran is called, they call themselves Islamic State, not to be confused with ISIS, right? But Iran doesn't mention economic growth in its constitution. Do you understand constitution? Constitution is the document of setting up the country. So Iran had a lot of wars and revolutions. In 1978 or 1980, they made a new country, okay? And they made a new constitution. Korea's constitution was probably made in the 50s, right? After the Korean War. But Iran, when they made their constitution, it was Islamic party which came to power. So they don't talk about economic growth in their constitution, right? They just talk about, like, religious issues, social issues. We should be equal and fair. So they're not worried about increasing their GDP or those kind of things as a country. It's a different system. Okay, they take the Islamic law very seriously. So the next point is the uh, jurisdiction. Just a, another point on the different ideas of law. We can mention more later. Copyright. So if we looked at the the Marxist idea of law, maybe China, right? They have a different idea of law, about copyright. They think that people should share. <coughs> Technology and know-how, right? Why? Because if people all share their technology and know-how, it can be better for society. Do you understand that idea? Yeah. So our technology and know-how should be freely available. However, in the US and England, they think, no, don't share. Why? <coughs> because we need incentive. 
Do you understand incentive? Yes. If we don't have any incentive, people are not going to do anything. They're just going to sit at home, do nothing, all day. Okay? They're not going to work. Why? Because they're going to say, why should I work really hard to make this new technology? And then I don't get any benefit. I have to give it away to everybody. Right? <coughs> you might get some people who are very nice and they think, oh, that's good for society. So I'm going to work 12 hours a day and make the technology and the know-how because it's good for society and I want to help society. But unfortunately, not all people are like that. Okay? So a lot of people need an incentive to work hard and make those things. Okay? So they want the incentive, they can be a millionaire. Okay? I can be a millionaire, I can drive a Ferrari, I can go to the expensive hotel, right? I can go to parties with the Hollywood stars. Now I'm going to try and work very hard. Do you understand the different idea? Yes. So which one is better? This idea about copyright law or this idea about copyright law? Which one do you prefer? Hmm? Not to share. Not to share incentives. Chinese students. Heard the second one too. Okay, but we can understand that there is different thinking behind the legal system. So the copyright protection is not going to be as strong in China as in other countries, right? Because they have different idea. We can't we can't say that this is right and this is wrong. Can we say this is right and this is wrong? No, we can't. Why? We can't say this legal system is correct and this one is not correct. Just each one has their advantage and disadvantage. We just discussed about the disadvantage of the American one. That in Brazil, people can't afford the drug for breast cancer. Okay? Maybe if we make an invention like a drug for breast cancer, we should just share it with everybody. It's good for society. Right? But then the Americans are going to say, well, then we never would have made this invention and we wouldn't have any drug for breast cancer because nobody would have invested the money to do the R&D, right? Nobody would have worked that hard or got the team together. So it's hard to know, but just it helps us to understand that different countries have different legal systems and we have to adapt to that, okay? So an example of how Hollywood movies adapted the Chinese system Different pricing. They sell their movies a lot cheaper in China than other countries. Okay? Because the copyright protection is not as strong, they know that people can buy the bootleg version, right? Or download the bootleg version easily. So they make the price a lot cheaper. Okay? That's one way. Microsoft, one way Microsoft deals with this problem is they see it as, at the moment, People can copy our product, we'll allow them to do that. Maybe sometime in the future, uh, the law might get stricter and people have to buy a product and then everybody's going to buy Microsoft because they already use Microsoft and they're used to using Microsoft. So companies can make a different strategy based on the, the different legal system. So if we have a dispute, between two companies. Uh, there is no judicial body just for legal commercial problems arising between citizens of different countries. Okay? The International Court of Justice is country and country. Country and country, not com company and company. So when countries have a dispute, they go to the International Court of Justice. But when companies have a dispute, like Samsung and Apple, they have to fight in Samsung and Apple had a case in every different country, right? Different court and different law. So we can see that Samsung won in Korea, Apple won in the US. Okay? Samsung won in Germany, maybe Apple won in Australia. So because of the different legal system, they can have different ideas and different results. But Apple and Samsung is quite big and global company. Not many companies are going to be fighting all around the world. But if we do have a legal problem with another company, we have to see where is it going, the case going to be tried. Okay? So juris, this is called jurisdiction. It's decided on the basis of jurisdiction clauses included in contracts. So this is the, what the company should do. Do you understand clause? Clause means sentence. So we put a sentence in the contract, very simple. 
in the case of a dispute, this case will be tried in Korea. Okay? If it says that in the contract, that's it. We're going to hear the case in Korea. So it's a good idea. What do you do if the two countries can't agree? You want it to be tried in Korea, but the other country, you're doing business with somebody from England, and they want it to be tried in England. What's the solution? There. Both, you want to put a clause in, let's try in Korea if there's a problem. They want to put a clause in, let's try in England if there's a problem. When you make a contract. Can you think of any solution? We can pick a third country. Okay? Neutral country. Often companies pick California. Because Cal California has one of the highest numbers of lawyers for, per head of population in the world. Right? And people are familiar with California system, okay? So we could try our case in California, UK and Korean company. Just hire a lawyer in California, okay? And they hire, hire a lawyer in California. If you're a big company, you can try the case in Cal under Californian law in California, in the US, okay? In the US, different states have different, even just different states has different laws. So California and New York has different law. Uh, so the next one, we didn't write in the contract, then where was the contract made? Right? I went on a business trip to England. We wrote the contract in England, shook hands in England, okay, then we're going to try the case in England. Where the provisions of the contract were performed? So the contract is all being performed in Korea, right? Let's say it's a travel agency, English people coming to Korea. So all of the English tourists come to Korea, it's being performed in Korea, then it can be tried in Korea. Okay? But the most important one is the clause. So we should have a, a clause in our contract. So litigation is going to court, but we don't really want to go to court. That's kind of the last case scenario. Okay. If we go to court, we can have a poor image and public relations. If we go to court, it's very public. The news can come there and report on the case, what happened. All our public information comes out. Maybe we don't really look bad, okay? Because we're fighting with the other company. Uh, we, we may not want to go to court because, like I explained about the Irish company coming to Korea, we might feel we get unfair, unfair tra treatment. We're not going to get fair treatment. Uh, we might have difficulty in collecting the judgment. It's a lot of, it's very expensive and takes a lot of time to bring legal action. Loss of confidentiality. Everything is out in the open. So, the first step we should do is mediation. If we have a problem, and we can't solve the problem, just me and the other company, then we get a mediator. A mediator is a third person who listens to the two sides. So you two guys are fighting, right? But you really hate each other now because you've been fighting.